All right, guys, I'm back from SHOT Show. And we'll talk about that later on when I get back to it with the actual after action report. But for now, The Office has left me something to review in regards of something that basically would start off the actual week. So, let's see what we got. Oh. Well, I think we know where this is going. In 2003, Mr. Marty Daniels received the best thing that he would ask for in regards to contracts and help, even his first SHOT Show. Surprisingly enough, it's the award for SOCOM on the contract for the Riz 2 Rail. And surprisingly enough, you should know this company because today's company from even that during the time of SHOT Show is still doing crazy amount of innovations and is still being iconic in the world of AR-15s. The same thing could be said about Airsoft, as everyone would want to imitate, of course, every single Special Forces operator out there. And of course, we're talking about the actual Daniel Defense lineup. And best way to start it off with is something my favorite, is what we talk about is the DDM-4. So, let's open the box and find out what we got to review for this week's episode. What's up guys? And well, let's start off with something very interesting. Is today we're gonna to be talking about is the King Arms Daniel Defense Fully Licensed Gas Blowback Rifle. And surprisingly enough, this is actually pretty good. So, why don't we start off with what we always do, is working our way from the front and then work our way to the back of the rifle. Starting off with, as the one thing that you'll see come out of the mine is of course the federally mandated outer barrel. And, of course, it is 14mm counterclockwise threading. So, if you want to change it out for your standard flash hider, or even like putting any other typical suppressors, or any other that, that style, you should be okay in regards of that. Now, you do have is a full metal aluminum outer barrel. And, of course, let's get this out of the room, is the FSP rail. Now, surprisingly, some people don't like it. They don't like how big and blocky this front sight is. But, for me, personally, this is actually my type of rail I would see more often. In fact, here's the photo of me using this at an HSP field, and it's the same FSP rail that I would use. But why would I pick that? Well, surprisingly enough, this is the early statement of the first ever firearm that was made by Daniel Defense. Mainly, Marty Daniels brought it out in 2009, known as the DDM-4. V1. But, the one thing that's very interesting about it is the fact that it's still free float and still be able to actually have the FSP rail as a normal regular sight system. You still have your typical standard Picatinny rails from basically all around the rail itself to be able to do any attachments you'll see such as the front light, laser systems, and the best part is it's monolithic all the way through so you have more real estate for spaces to put your typical optics like such as you would use either a short dot or even a magnifier and red dot type of combinations. But they won't hold out on you on King Arms as one thing we do have is a rear sight for backup just in case you run out of batteries. Now that's enough about the rail. Let's go ahead and go into mainly the actual licensing and trademarks. And of course right off the bat we're going to see on the rail that does stick out and make it more kosher and legitimate is you do have is your type of model on the rail. Mainly the fact that it says here is Daniel Defense. And of course we have the licensing trademarks that say it's built in Savannah, Georgia with your cage number. And of course the model number of what type of rail you have. Now, when we get to the actual receiver, things get a little bit more extra as we look into it where the receiver does have a deep inscribed of the Dan Defense licensing trademarks. And what's nice and extra about that is you do have is the DDM4, saying the model, which is the M4A1. Fun fact about Daniel Defense. Surprisingly enough, Daniel Defense actually won the contract since 2003, and it's been a reliable system for service for a long time until it was replaced by the actual Geisley Rail, which is the URGI. But it lasted quite some time and heck, it's still being used as of today. Well, 
The reason why is because of the free flow barrel system and the new design, it was very well balanced. And the one thing that did come in handy for mainly typical of what we've seen in ARs is the fact that for different modular systems, you wanted a basically a long rail, but still keep it in the mid range system, DDM4. You wanted to make a close quarter, swap out the upper, put a Mark 18. You wanted to make it, again, still a recce build rifle. Well, Daniel Defense was not really able to say, I have no excuse for it. And guess what? It did its job and it was very, very reasonable for its service time out there. So, good on that for Daniel Defense. Now, of course, you're gonna have is your standard controls with basically being the fact that you have is your safe, semi, and full auto. The only time you're able to actually make those operation moves is when you have the bolt racks and be able to function through the cycle. And of course, it's still gonna be on the left-hand side. Sorry, lefties. But you still have your standard controls of being the magazine catch and your bolt catch here to help release the bolt by sitting it to home. Now, if you're wondering why the A2 grip, Yes, it's too old. The manipulation does get in the way sometimes. You just want to use your natural grip that you can make using your original hands. Well, surprisingly enough, King's Arms is able to actually take real steel type of grips or any other gas blowback styles. All you need to do is keep the original screw from your grip and basically swap out the grip itself, which is easy to just unscrew the grip and you'll be good to go. As for your stock, Surprisingly, this should look awfully familiar to a certain company that would cost around hmm, the $40 or $60 price range. Very comfortable, very slim, and you do have this nice rubber padding in the back. And as a typical AOR you would have is a six positional stock selection to help adjust it to your perfect length. For example, for me, well, I think I'm at four. That should be fine. What I do like about this type of stock is the fact that you're able to still have a slim cheek, but again, it's very wide to help out where maybe possible storage that you can do in the back end by just removing this part. Now, what I meant wide enough to put as a storage compartment in here is, well, if you pinch these two tabs on the back of the stock, you're able to open up the compartment in the back, which can actually hold a couple CR-123 batteries in the back, just in case to help cover up your uh, your backups for your actual laser systems, your optics, depending on whatever you would need for it. Or, if like a typical gas blowback enthusiast, you'll have your actual lubrication inside here or something like that to help keep it maintained. As long as you keep the cap on it or have something very secured, well, that can make a nasty mess inside your stock. But again, the option is there for you. All right, now that we've broken down the rifle into its main components, let's go ahead and talk about the internals. Surprisingly enough, this is a very, very old system when it comes to gas blowbacks, where the internals are known for as the company as Western Arms. Who uses Western Arms in regards to compatibility? Well, surprisingly enough, you have King Arms, GNP, and some of the GHK. For example, if you look very closely to the trigger system, the sear, the hammer, and everything inside the lower, it is very familiar to closely of almost as the same thing you'll see on your typical GHKs and GMPs. But that doesn't stop you from basically using different parts as this is not really a proprietary system. Meaning you can repair these if something does go wrong. You can even upgrade it with certain parts. It is hard to find, but it is possible with a plethora of resources out there. And again, to the bolt, the one thing that we do notice about this is it is an aluminum, very chrome type of bolt system on here, which is pretty nice, but for me, it's kind of too garish. But it does what it does best is to stick out and of course to show that that's a really hard flex that you're using a gas blowback rifle. Believe me, as I've known this many times, is you want something to pop out and mainly with this, all this tan, of course, you can't go wrong with a little bit of chrome. 
Good news is that the nozzle system is still the same way as like a typical gas blow bag since you still have is your spring to actually return spring on the bolt itself and as well to that your valve inside and this very familiar cam bolt system that actually is your nozzle to help load the BB including the feed ram and of course do the normal stuff of compression which we see in the back of the o-ring as such right here making it very easy to basically disassemble and get into it if you need to do typical maintenance of like fixing your compression or even changing out your nozzle when need be well should cycle through just fine which we can get on to the next topic the trigger now surprisingly enough there is no slack at all on the trigger but it is again a very stiff trigger pull to make sure that you'll feel the hammer go clunk for example no slack at all where it's very very stiff but then to pull the hammer here we go again it is very stiff to pull the trigger, but that is very nice because of the fact that you won't have the slack to pull and you can very much anticipate when it actually goes off in a gas blowback to help simulate more realism. Now let's go ahead and feel the reset. So a nice audible click to go through to show that the actual wall has been reset on the hammer and the trigger to basically pull the trigger again. Let's try that again here for it again very nice on the audible clunk on the gas blowback rifle now one question is is where was the hop up as we look into the bolt there's nothing there there's not even anything on the upper well surprisingly it's underneath the rail I can see it being a very good reason why to have the hop up right underneath the rail and basically in between the outer barrel. To make it more fine tuned to whatever BB that you're going to use on a King Arms gas blowback, you want to make sure that it doesn't move because of all the vibrations or any other situations out there, which makes it a pretty good idea having it really at in between the rail and the outer barrel, which you can remove by just removing the screws on the rail itself on both sides, able to pull out the rail from the back, and then you're able to adjust the hop up, which is right underneath inside the outer barrel. Again, a really good innovation when it comes to preventing from any other issues of making it move the hop up and again, messing up your actual backspin to whatever weight BBs you want to use on here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you know what this time of episode would lead off to is magazine compatibility. So, of course, I have in my hand is the typical stock standard King Arms gas blowback magazine. So we're going to test this out. So far, so good. Push. Rack. Lock function works. That's good. Cycle through a bit. Very good on the recoil. It's very, very responsive. And more, I would say more better on the recoil in certain other gas blowback rifles, but it does the job. Now, for regards of my testing, I do have is a Matrix gas blowback magazine, which is surprisingly stated as Western Arms compatible. So, is it? Let's find out. Gas is filled, let's try it out. Lock off function works as good. All right, let's give it a few cycles. Nice. So, for magazine compatibility, it's doing pretty well. Now, when I did test it out with the recoil, I, one thing I do like that's make it more immersive is if you notice when you fire a real steel on certain rifles, you end up with the crazy twang sound of the spring in the back end of the buffer tube when you fire the real round. Surprisingly, this does a really good job on imitating that as well as you do feel the same thing as the buffer spring going the twang part 
when you feel it in the back end of the recoil when first shot and a couple shots after that. So again, it's a pretty nice little immersive and I would even say a pretty good training rifle. I'm using 0.20 gram BBs and Jack Precision Race Gas. So when we chrono this rifle, one thing I have to know right off the bat is for the lowest end on the FPS, we were looking around the 407 to the 400 FPS. Now for the highest I've seen on our chrono was 420 to 449, which is very concerning for mainly if you wanna play outdoors. So here are two things I could recommend in regards of helping you make this more legal to your fields or any other type of Milsim games to pass. Option one would be to swap the inner barrel to be a little bit more shorter to help out in reducing the velocity in that part. The second option would be to purchase an end pass valve system to put into your nozzle and then to help regulate it by adjusting your actual amount of just adjustment on the gas itself from the nozzle to help reduce the FPS by that part. So, meaning in the overall statement is if you're very tech savvy, you can do it yourself. But if not in gas blowback, just bring it to your local tech in helping you help reduce the FPS to make it more indoor friendly or even more outdoor within the regulations such as the 400 FPS that we have here. If you wanted to purchase a King Arm gas blowback rifle, well, surprising, it comes with mainly the rifle, the magazine, and surprisingly interesting is a short stroke buffer kit system that you can put in here to help either make it more responsive to helping out with your recoil. And of course, the typical you would see is the adapter to help load the magazine in to any other generic type of speed loaders that we would use. Now, one drawback is unfortunately, there is no manual that came in box. But if you do have any questions or concerns about your rifle or just need help with troubleshooting, again, don't be afraid to email us in regards of any questions about the gas blowback king arms. My overall consensus on this rifle, surprisingly enough, I actually do like it. Reason wise is because the fact that a very immersive and almost as realistic as you can for a gas blowback rifle. Mainly, the one thing that did make me kind of surprisingly go back to old school days of annual qual was that twanging sound that you get in the back of the buffer tube like you would normally hear when you actually fire off a real round. So that, that kind of made me kind of smile just a bit as this is something that you would kind of would just get. But at the same time, you do have is more realism in when it comes to the lower end of Western Arms typical part system being inside the lower. Of course, you have your sears, springs, hammers, all in the lower. And of course, Western Arms is very known for being the old school type of gas blowback systems, but a plethora of parts to easily help repair it if it does go down. And I also do like is the fixed hop up that is basically inside your rail and right in the outer barrel. So it does help preventing any issues of help preventing any other type of vibrations or any type of manipulations that would cause it to mess up your whole thing and still mess up the back of, of your back spin inside your BB or whatever weight you use. So again, it's pretty nice overall in that consensus. Which leads to my last point on the rifle in cost. For this rifle in King Arms on the Daniel Defense licensing, it's $400. Now before you start booing, I will have to admit, for a gas blowback rifle, if you just want for training purposes, that saves you, shall we say about $200 in comparison to a Tokyo Marui, and also maybe even $100 to the Siemens CGS, this does help out when it comes to more training purposes of mainly like a real AR. 
where you do have your same lowers, the same design, and of course, even the twang system like I see in the buffer tube. So overall, if you're looking for something that's more to your real Daniel Defense, or even in general, wanting something that's more accurate to it without paying TM money or SEMA money, or in general, just the crazy amount you would have to spend on an AEG to actually get the same receivers, might as well just buy a gas blowback rifle while we're at it. But I digress. If you're looking for any type of videos or more products like these, go ahead and check out our airsoftmaster.com. But again, don't forget to like and subscribe and comment what do you guys think about the King Arms or in general your experiences with Western Arm gas blowback rifles. As helping out in the community airsoft does help out when it comes to providing the little guy that's starting off with a gas blowback rifle like I did. Which was actually surprisingly enough now a few months ago. But I digress. Again, this is Mike from Airsoft Masters. I'll see you guys on the next episode. This video is brought to you by Airsoft Master.